Good day. I'm Pastor Bruce. I'm the pastor at Community Presbyterian Church in Lingle, Wyoming, and First Wyoming United Presbyterian Church in Torrington, Wyoming. And this is worship for June 14th. If you have a chance, you should pull up our bulletin, which you'll find on Pastor Bruce's uh, Facebook page. Because the artwork that I chose for today shows a picture of Jesus passing into town on Palm Sunday. And I think it's striking because it's not the Jesus that I grew up with, and it may not be the Jesus that you grew up with, but it is a closer representation to what Jesus actually looked like than I've been aware of. Take a look at that and see how it makes you feel. I think you'll appreciate it. You know, with all the stuff that's been going on in the last few weeks, we have to talk about racism. We have to talk about oppression, the poor, and those who have been left and kicked to the margins of our society. If you've been following our worship services, you know that this is one of the things that Jesus talked about a lot. And it's important for us to talk about it too. So, I hope you are ready for worship. Download the bulletin and join me as we pray our gathering prayer. Wonderful God, we come before you, a people with questions, a people not sure how to respond to the world around us. We just pray that your Spirit will guide us as we seek to live faithful lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, please join me in the call to worship. Jesus Christ summons us to answer God's call of mercy. Christ gathers us and gives us power to be healed and to heal, to be forgiven and to forgive, to be freed from sin and to set others free, to tell one another in the world God's presence is at hand. Let us worship God. Now let's join together as we sing our praise hymns.
Now we've come to our time for confession. The mystery of God brings the promise of life, but we doubt the Spirit's power to sustain us. Through the example of Jesus, we are offered abundant life. Let us confess. We have missed the mark and receive new life. Please pray with me the prayer for confession. Creator, we confess that we do not know how to look for you. We do not sense your nearness. And if there are angels among us, we are unaware. We do not trust that our hardships can be transformed by your Spirit. O covenant keeper, forgive us. Let us laugh with joy because your grace has made peace among us. Amen. We have confessed both with our mouth and with our hearts. Our confession reminds us of our shortcomings. We know that God waits with open arms to receive us, forgive us, and love us. By the acts of the Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us sing our song of response. And now, let's pray together the prayer for illumination. The prayer for illumination. God of redemption, summon us to Sarah's joy, Abraham's wonder, and Paul's confident hope through the word and work of the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. The scripture lessons for today are from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 8, and Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through chapter 10, verse 8. Listen for the word of God. Romans 5, 1 through 8. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, Rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still were sinners, Christ died for us. And in Matthew 9:35 through 10:8. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. 
Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother, Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother, John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jancy. We appreciate your bringing our scripture lessons to us today. Thank you, Tim and Jancy, for your hospitality and your singing on this video. We appreciate it.